1978. What was your most played album? When was this? Um, this is the first Bruce Springsteen album I bought, Darkness on the Edge of Town, and I think I went back as soon as I got my pay to buy uh, Born to Run. So I'd missed the first two, and I'd missed Born to Run. I was aware of them, but I wasn't a fan. Um, and from then on, till about, you know, 81 when the river came out, I played this and Born to, to Run almost every day of my life. It was like the soundtrack um, to that era. And I still listen to all my favourites, Thin Lizzy, Derringer, Wishbone, you know, Zeppelin, all that stuff. But I listened to, to Bruce non-stop. Um, I just absolutely loved these records. So I thought it might be interesting um, for anyone you know, who's interested in playing the songs to go through some of Bruce's songs from, from that era. Um, they really lend themselves to this Telecaster. The thing that I think most of us call a twang. You know where I'm coming from on that one. Right? Then Born to, to Run, I don't think Miami Steve was part of the band as such, although he's responsible for the legendary story um, when he suggested the harmonies um, that the Brecker brothers play in 10th Avenue Freeze Out. And the legend goes that Bruce you know, said, time to put the kid on the payroll. On Darkness, Miami Steve is obviously a big part of the band and he plays one of the most famous guitar solos on the album. Uh, when I saw them in, in, in 81, I was amazed how good... Well, I shouldn't have been amazed, but you know, put it another way, Miami Steve was really, really good. The whole band was sensational. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, Born to Run has some great guitar playing all through. You know, it's obviously got that, that huge Born to Run. Riff. I'm, I'm smiling there because I, another apocryphal story is uh, that Miami Steve suggested to Bruce that the, the, uh, the, the, his C note should become a C sharp. Apparently Bruce had a... You know, that kind of opening riff and, and Miami Steve had said, that'd be better if it was... etc and the rest is history. Don't know if that's true or not, it's a great story. On Born to Run, um, Bruce plays that harmony guitar solo, and as I said, because my own C wasn't in the band at that point, um, and David Sanchez had left the album before on Jungle Land, um, and he plays that incredible solo on Backstreet's. Now, I know that Springsteen fans stroke fanatics are the most picky fans on earth, so if I get something wrong, you know, I'll, I'll apologise in advance. That would be anecdotal or whatever. Um, but it's got a different sound to Darkness, because it's got this huge Phil Spector sound. Um, whereas this, to me, is more a stripped-down rock and roll sound. Um, and, the, the, you know, the clanging, you know, Bruce's... <laughs> Telecasa and, and Miami Steve Strat kind of take centre stage. Great sax solos from Clarence Clemens, obviously on both albums. Um, epic on Born to Run and, and a really good counterpoint to Bruce's um, on uh, Darkness. The, the, the solo that Miami Steve plays in the Promised Land, you know when it goes... You know, we'll get to that later, right? But for start with Bad Lines, the ba Badlands is based around it's an E and it's got like the three prime chords plus a relative minor. So you know after you get the drum uh, intro, it's ba da bum bum ba da bum bum, right? You ever get that? So we're getting E, B, A, C sharp minor. B. Um, and that kind of runs the whole thing, you know, the verse of And then the pre-chorus. The 
JD. Guitar solo, um, really interesting because he play he plays one line in, over three octaves, right? So after the second chorus of Bad Lines, right, we're ready for Bruce's solo. By the way, at the start there's there's a lovely um, slide that again reminds me of, of like you know the like Dick Dale or that or that sort of thing in the entry year, you know Bruce going. So it comes to Bruce's solo. Um, you may think this is really simplistic guitar playing, and you know, I, I'm, I don't think it is, but you know, you may think that. It's one phrase played over three octaves. The first thing you hear is Bruce going. First notes of a major scale, you know, Dory But. As with all the guitar player on this album, it's got an absolutely fierce vibrato. So Bruce plays it like this. And then there's a wailing. The same thing again. Then take it down here. And then Bruce plays. And that's his solo done, right? So it's these three phrases. And then it's kind of rock and roll. That line, right? So the first one. So you play it in the G string, you can play it in the B string if you want. If you want a little bit more cut, it's going to have a little bit more heft. And then. Then we go right up into wailing. And down here. And then this. Right? That's it. It's one phrase played three times, three different octaves, with an incredible amount of passion, followed by a rock and roll line. That line, by the way, I glossed over it. You bend A to a B and go. It's that line. Right? So after the third. You get this. Just for good measure, um, at that point, Clarence Clemens comes in with. And then it goes into the quiet. That's for the ones who had a notion. So that's basically it. That is um, Badlands. It's all the chords. So we've got the intro. Into the song. And the pre-chorus. I believe in it. much shake and vibrato as you possibly can on, on, on that one. It's it's pretty hysterical and it's all the better for it. So that's track one. Side one. Um, darkness of the Age of Time. Um, track two features, I would say, one of Bruce's best solos ever. And track four is just off the scale brilliant. But I'll come back to them. <laughs> 